So today we have a French hot hatch. Can you use a hot hatch from the late 90s as a dad car today? And then I'm gonna tell you an absolute shocker of a story from my childhood about a GTI 6. My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. So I'm absolutely chuffed to be here today with one of my absolute favourite automotive YouTubers I've been watching for a long time, Jack here, off of number 27. And Jack, you've, you're lucky enough, you've got three cool cars, haven't you? So this is your daily. This is my daily. Then I have a Lotus Elise S1 uh, and I have uh, my Ferrari 308 that everyone knows, the Influenza. The Influenza, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So... Look, not everybody's fortunate enough to be able to have free cars or have the space for free cars or have the knowledge on how to work on these cars. So, you know, like me, I can only have one car at the moment. So but I've been thinking about this. I think my car is the perfect amalgamation of your free cars. So it's something exciting, which every time you get in it, it's like an event and it's got a special badge as well, like the Ferrari. It's hand built in Britain to a certain extent. It's got an aluminium chassis like the Lotus. And it's practicality, it's got rear seats and you can daily it every day. That is my genuine daily. So I'm challenging you to drive my DB9 with an, with an idea of thinking, well, look, is this an amalgamation of the three cars? If I could only have one, would it do it for me? I think you're nuts, but I accept your challenge. I mean, you're nuts for a few reasons. I think you're nuts because I can't quite see it, but I'm going to take it out with an open mind and we'll see. <laughs> but also I think you're nuts because today you're coming here you're driving my old hatchback and I'm taking out your Aston Martin. So well, it seems like a bit of an unfair trade, but all the same, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I've got some nostalgic memories of this car, so I'm very excited to drive this as well. But yeah, let's see what you think of mine. Awesome. Nice one. So my best friend growing up had a 306 GTI 6, but the sheer mention of the name sends shivers down our spine. We've got PTSD about it, and I'll tell you all about the absolute shocker of a story when I take it out for a drive in a minute. But look, let's have a look in the back and check what the practicality is like, just quickly before we take it out. Right, so getting in the back of a 306. Wow, this takes me back. I've done this so many times when I was 16, 17. And yes, it's pretty much how I remember. Although, I used to have hair which rubbed on the, uh, on the roof liner. I don't have that problem anymore, do I? God, this is really bringing back memories. Right, well, let's very quickly just try some child seats in the back. Obviously, I'm expecting them to fit in and it to be belt secured. There's no isofixes there, no. So, yeah, let's just really quickly have a look. Now, I do always like trying a baby seat in a two-door. And look at that, I mean, that's so simple. Why do you need five doors, eh? Right, and then let's strap this in. And with that seat automatically rolling forward, I've got loads of space here to actually do this. Jack, where's your seatbelt gone? Ah, oh, there it is, right. Now, I'm not just saying this, that is the easiest belt secured rear facing baby seat I've ever installed in a car. You've got so much space here to do it. And would you look at that, I managed to get free across with the trusty travel child seat there in the middle. And I mean, you could have a booster seat in the front as well, and I could take all four of my children out in this car. That's as practical as my wife's X5. And obviously, passes the dad car's boot test really easily, doesn't it? I mean, these boots are huge. For such a small car, that is massive. Right, let's go for a drive, shall we? <laughs> so I never actually got to drive my best friend's 306. So this is gonna be fun. So, the 306 GTI 6, let me tell you why this was such a special car. I mean, back in my day when I was 17, 18, 19, you know, 306s, that was one of the cool hatchbacks to have. And this was one of the daddy models. The GTI 6 has got a two litre engine up the front there, producing around 167 brake horsepower, I think. And it's mated to a six speed manual gearbox. So if you had one of these, and you were parked up with all your mates and their hatchbacks, and you were playing top trumps, it was a big deal to be able to be the guy that could say, yeah, the old GTI 6, two litre, six speed manual, about 170 brake horsepower. Do you know, these, these were really good stats back then, you know, for, for hot hatches and for cars back then, they were really good. And this car's really light as well. I mean, even though this was actually like the, the big boy Peugeot, you know, the 106 being the smaller one, this is the 306, but, 
It only weighs about 1125 kilograms, I think. Which, I mean, that makes the GR Yaris that I recently drove on the channel look like a bit of a porker. And performance, I mean, I think you can get zero to 60 in this in around eight seconds. It was a really quick car of the time. Well, look, we're coming up to a national speed limit here. So I, I give it, I'm gonna give it some beans, right? Let's drop down. I tell you what, let's go into first. There's no one behind me, apart from the jogger there. Right, first gear, let's go. To me, I think is look. I'm not exactly old. I'm, you know, about to turn 35, aren't I? But this really makes me feel young. It makes me feel like you know that magical time when you first start driving. Your mates are getting really cool hot hatches and stuff. And I swear, every time you drive a car like this, when you're that age, you're constantly just trying to drive it right up to the line and actually find out. Okay, yeah, no, that's too much. That's too much. I mean, I'm, look, I'm doing 60 now, but it feels like I could go a hell of a lot faster. And that's that's fun isn't it and it makes you want to push it around corners and you know front wheel drive a hatchback like this it's kind of a safe thing to find the limit in isn't it what is this like then compared to my daily my aston martin db9 well it's really is a complete opposite I mean, let's just start with visibility. I mean, when you're driving this, it just feels like I've got visibility. The dash, the steering wheel, everything just like melts away. It's just in the peripheral. Whereas in the Aston, it's, you know, it's the opposite way around almost. All you can see is dash and steering wheel. And it's just generally a super, super fun thing to drive. And it encourages you to drive it to the limit. Whereas in my Aston, you know, you just kind of waft around. I mean, it's, it suits it for my purposes, you know, using it as a dad car, my children in it, you know, I, I don't feel the urge to constantly push that Aston to the limit. I really don't. You've been cruising along at 60 of this, <laughs> you put a smile on your face. Oh, sixth gear, look at that. Sixth gear. <laughs> so this car's also got a short shift kit on it as well. Jack did say to me, you know, it could be a bit notchy, but to be honest, I think it feels really nice, you know? French hatchbacks aren't really something that massively appeals to me personally, I've got to be honest with you. I mean, French cars in general. I had to Google this morning while sat on the toilet and see what a modern equivalent to this is. So if you're looking at the 208, you know, I don't think Peugeot make three-door cars anymore. In a day and age when you know everyone should be environmentally conscious, particularly car manufacturers, why Peugeot not making a three-door car? There must be a hell of a lot of Peugeot buyers out there who only drive the car 99% of themselves with just them or maybe a passenger, and they never <laughs> barely use the rear seats. In which case, why have they been forced to have rear doors with additional weight? It's not environmentally friendly, is it? Anyway. But look at, looking at the 208, I mean, it's such a confusing thing to look at. From the front, it kind of looks like it's trying to be like a Range Rover Velar type thing. From the side, I mean, mini crossover SUV thing continues with like the, the wheel arches. Why have modern Peugeot's got Mustang lights? Honestly, like the, there's no cohesion at all to the design of modern cars. It's, it's almost like a clickbait car. It's a car with loads of little things which make you think, oh, that looks cool, but then it doesn't actually work together at all. And then this car, I think, is the absolute opposite. It's cohesive design, isn't it? Everything flows together perfectly. And just stuff like the lights follow the same overall shape of the car. The wing mirrors, the same sort of overall shape of the car. <laughs> sounds fantastic as well. I did ask Jack, I said, what, is, is that a standard exhaust? And it is. I need to say a massive thank you to Jack for letting me 
drive this car today. I started watching number 27 years ago when he was on his quest with his 12 car list, you know, 12 car bucket list. And my favorite that he had was a Lotus Esprit Turbo, beautiful blue one. And then more recently with the Influenza, he bought a Ferrari, sold and seen on an auction site, uh, just as the pandemic broke. I mean, he's been fixing it and breaking it ever since. And the event that you're watching this and you haven't already checked out number 27, please do so and then comment saying dad car sent you. <laughs> so why is the GTI 6 associated with PTSD for me and my best friend of the time? So my best friend, when we were younger, he was a year older than me and he got his driving license straight away. As soon as he turned 17, he just got it done. And he had a 106 initially, which he wrote off. Then he bought a 306, a 1.8 306. I can't remember what it's in, XS or SXI. I can't remember, but it was a 1.8, but it was a mint one. And it was a very similar color to this. It might've just had like a slight purplish sort of tint to it as well but it's a very similar color to this then when he was 18 he got a full-time job and he decided to go to the bank and get a whopping great ten thousand pound loan and buy his dream car and obviously we're the original gran turismo generation so we all had a jdm legend as, as our dream car and he wanted a scooby so we got this ten thousand pound bank loan spent about five five and a half thousand pounds on getting a heavily modified wrx super impreza and it was crazy but he needed £10,000 because it was five, five and a half grand to buy, £3,000 to insure, and then I think he had like one or two thousand left over just in case anything went wrong with the car that he could get done whilst he was still paying the loan back. That, well, that was the plan anyway. But with his new full-time job, he was using it to commute every day. And that heavily modified car was getting single digits fuel economy. So long story short, he only had the car for about six months before it basically bankrupted him and he was forced to sell it. And the only person that, that would buy it on short notice was a chap on Piston Heads who reached out to him and said, would you part exit for my gold GTI 6? <laughs> he had no choice and he said, yeah, look, I, I like 306s, look, let's, let's go for it. And all the pictures on Piston Heads, the car looked lovely to be fair. And we knew that the GTI 6 was, you know, one of the best 306s you can get. So this chap turned up with his GTI 6. <laughs> Let's just say the pictures must have been taken years before because it was an absolute dog. Ropey as anything. There's paint lacquer coming off. Uh, the, the, the sunroof was leaking and wouldn't shut properly. Oh, God, honestly, it was, it was horrendous. But he had no choice. He had to take the deal. Uh, it was his part exit and I think he got a grand his way, which at the time just wasn't a very good deal at all. And the chap drove his dream Scooby off like he stole it. Well, I guess he kind of did. And still to this day, the memory of seeing that guy tearing off in his dream WRX and then just looking at this very sorry condition 306 is it still haunts my friend to this day. And it haunts me because he carried on paying that bank loan and having to just drive around this 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 ropey hatchback which is not what he wanted i think he was still paying it off years and years later on when i got married and he was my best man so look <laughs> it was a cautionary tale and it's why i vowed to never ever get a car on finance just seeing the pain of every single month you know there's all this money going out and then not having his dream car to show for it but that's not where the story ends really with 306s for me because although it's unfortunate that our memory of the GTI 6 isn't a very fond one, the memory of that first 1.8 that he had, which was absolutely mint, we've got incredible memories of that car. Right? He had a massive subwoofer in the back and we would terrorise everybody playing the Prodigy out at full, full whack at like 11 o'clock at night. But that car was just incredible. And sitting in this car today, I mean, I look, get to drive it. This, this dash just feels so familiar. I absolutely love it. And yeah, look, I've got such good memories of the 306. <laughs> and if there's any 18 year olds out there who thinking about getting a whopping great loan and buying a cool car, I'd advise against it. Don't do it. Mind you, if my friend didn't do that, he wouldn't have had his dream car when he was 18, would he? Can't take that away from him.
And I know my friend will be watching this, so hello to you, mate. So in summary then, for the GTI 6, would I buy one? Well, no, I wouldn't. But I'm not a huge hot hatch guy. You know, I mean, it's changing slightly, but would this make a good dad car? Absolutely, yes. The rear practicality is undeniable. The boot's huge. But what Jack's got here is a truly wonderful car. I mean, he's put time and money into you know, respraying this car. Um, I mean, it's really dirty today, but, but I can tell that this paintwork is beautiful. You know, for anybody seeing this car just drive past, it's a real treat for them, you know, to see a really loved 306. Because like I said, you know, even going back like, oh, what, 15 years when, when my friend had one of these, there was ropey ones of these around 15 years ago. So to have one today like this, which is so lovely, and that he's put the time and money into making it so lovely as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic thing and a real treat to have on the road. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. If you're new, hello, please subscribe. And um, hit the bell icon, like, comment below. Comment below. If you came over from number 27, comment below and say hi. <laughs> um, and look, I'll see you guys on the next one. I've got so much cool stuff coming up, okay? You take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have you seen my other dad car reviews? If not, go and check them out. There's loads of really cool ones on there. Right, let's get in here. This is gonna be easy, I think. I got the poison, I got the remedy. I got the pulsating rhythmical remedy.